Animated GIFs can be a really powerful way to grab attention on social media. And if they're done right, they're not seen as, you know, annoying or flashy, but actually interest grabbing. In this lesson, you'll learn how to create an animated GIF and then use it on Twitter using Photoshop. We'll create something similar to this. Ours is going to be a little bit taller to include a little bit area above and below, but it's going to look like this where it's just a looping animation from a desaturated image to a saturated image. Of course, you can follow along with your own photo that's relevant to your brand as well. So go ahead and open up Adobe Photoshop. If you want to follow along with my example, you can open up bubbles.jpg from the support files. And we need our usual panels open, so layers, options, and tools. But we also need timeline open, that one right there. So what we want to do is first resize this. So select the crop tool here and enter a preset up at the top that's 1024 pixels. And I put 597 for mine and 72 pixels per inch. Depending on how much of a landscape orientation you want, or if you want one that's a little bit taller in relation to the width, 1024 pixels is good currently for the width. If you want to follow along exactly with mine, you can do 597 pixels. This is going to be for Twitter. So I'm going to move this up just a little bit like that. So we got some breathing room around there. Good rule of thirds. So I'm going to double click in there. And it looks smaller, but remember we're actually at 12.5% right there. So I'm going to zoom in with Control or Command Plus, and we're at 66.7%. So this is actual view, but I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the entire photo. And so what we want to do in this is we're going to duplicate this layer, and then we're going to add a layer mask. And what a layer mask is, it's non-destructive editing. So instead of just erasing pixels and then having to do edit undo or edit step backward or using the history panel to go back a couple steps so we can paint to bring back pixels that we had erased. So go ahead and press Control J on the PC or Command J on the Mac. That will duplicate our layer and then hit the eye icon of this top layer so it toggles the visibility and then click this bottom original layer. And we're going to desaturate this one so go to image adjustments hue saturation and I'm just going to bring the saturation down just a bit. I'm going to have this is like negative 60 or negative 54 and click OK. And you can see the difference there. It needs to be somewhat of a difference that's noticeable. And so now I'm going to toggle the visibility of this top layer again and select it. And we need to add a layer mask. And the layer mask icon, it's on the bottom of the layers panel. It looks like a circle inside of a rectangle. So click that. And what we want to do is completely mask out everything so far and I'll show you how this works. If you are using a brush tool you don't have to follow along with this step just yet. If you just want to watch this part, brush tool and then if you click in the top left hand corner hardness is set to 0% that's what we want to use and just a normal brush not one of these specialty brushes for this example and you can adjust the size there or you can press left or right bracket on the keyboard to resize as well. But if I click and drag some black in, I'm going to flip this. If you press X, it'll also flip the black and white. If you press D, it will set the foreground and the background to the default, which is white and black, and then press X to flip them. But I'm going to click and drag some black area in there and see how now it masks out. You can see right here the bottom layer is showing through. Wherever that black area is, it's masking out, basically erasing those pixels so the bottom layer shows through. And you can Alt-click it or option click on the Mac and it will show the mask right there and then alt or option click it again to bring back the photo. So a common mistake some people do is they're on the actual photo here and then click and drag and that doesn't work, right? So what you want to do is you want to make sure this mask is selected, it has the four white lines around it and then you can click and drag and then that masks out. All right. We actually need to mask out this entire area for this exercise. So what you can do is make sure the foreground is set to black and press alt backspace and that fills that area with black. It's basically masking out that entire photo, erasing the pixels so we can see through to the bottom layer. So what we want to do is bring some of those pixels back gradually and as we do that we will create a new layer almost like steps and we have to do this for the next step where we use the timeline. So go ahead and make sure the foreground is set to white and make sure you have a brush selected and it's a soft edge brush with hardness set to 0% and just click and drag in a little bit, something like that. 
Now press Control J on the PC or Command J on the Mac, and then make sure you have the mask selected over here, click on that, and then click and drag in a little bit more. And then press Control J or Command J. And if you paint right away, it won't work because we're on that actual layer. Got to click that layer mask there. And I'm going to paint in a little bit more. Control J again. Select this mask. And I'm going to paint in. And you can see it over here, gradually bringing in a little bit more. Control J again. We'll do one more. Brings all that in. All right. So now we have this layer, this layer, this layer, this layer. And that layer. All right, that's going to be our animation. We're toggling the visibility of all these layers, and that's going to be our, our animation from the frames down there. So this is where the timeline panel comes in. So if you don't have that already, just go to Window and then Timeline and select that. What we want to do is create frame animation. So if you don't see that, if it says Create Video Timeline, make sure you, we set it to Create Frame Animation, and then click that right there. Now it creates this frame animation. We have one frame right here. So that is the default, the desaturated photo. And so that's our first frame. So go ahead and click this bottom add a new frame icon. It kind of looks like the add a new layer icon. So add a new frame, or really it's duplicating the selected frame. And there's a couple of other options right in the top right hand corner. New frame, copy frame, and so on. But we just need to duplicate it, so that's a shortcut right there. And so in this new one, we need to toggle this visibility so this one shows, and that one's going to cover up this one except where it's masked out. So let's repeat that step. Duplicate frame, toggle visibility, duplicate frame, toggle visibility, duplicate frame, toggle visibility, and finally duplicate frame, toggle visibility. So right now we've got a zero second delay. That's what that number is there. It's the delay, the amount of delay between the frames. So we need to change that to something else for this one. Let's try point 0.2. The problem is notice that it only changed the delay between this one. So what you can do is hold shift while this one is selected and click over there and that will select all of them. You can also click in the upper right hand corner and go to select all frames. Let's just say one was selected. Click that and then select all frames. Either way. So now when I make a change, it will make that change to all of them. So this is point two. And by default, it might say once right there. That means it's going to play this animation once and stop. And in these, I would say usually we're trying to have this loop. So instead of once, click forever and then press this play button there. And now it plays our animation. Now let's say we wanted to bring that backward. You know, instead of just doing something like this, let's bring it back. What we would do, that's pretty easy, just duplicate this frame again, and then uncheck that top visibility. Duplicate frame, uncheck, duplicate frame, uncheck, duplicate frame, uncheck, and so on. And now we have the first one and the last one are the same, so there'll be a slight delay. If we don't want that, we just don't add that last frame. But I'll test it right here. I'll press play, and there we go. So this is looping, and there's our animation. And so what we want to do, uh, you can save this as a PSD file if you want to save it for later for your own copy. But a PSD file will not open up. It's the default Photoshop file. It will not embed on you know Twitter, Facebook, on web pages, for example, Instagram, any of those. We need JPEG or PNG. But for animation, we need a GIF or a GIF. So go ahead and go to File and then export and save for web for this one. That one's fine. And we're going to save it as a GIF. So I have 128. These lower quality ones will have a lower file size, but this one's only 1,007K. You know, we can't go currently above three megabytes for Twitter animated GIFs that we upload ourselves. So that should be fine. And we've got looping options right here forever. That's good. You can also preview it. You can press play and preview it. So we got 11 frames. So go ahead and press save. And I'm going to save that as bubbles color change Twitter. And there we go. When you're in Twitter and you're about to do a post here, you don't necessarily click add a GIF because that's just going to look for ones that are already available online, right? 
what we're going to do is actually add a photo like normal. So to add an image, you just click here, add photos or video like normal. And then there it is, bubbles, color change, Twitter. And press open. So there too, you can see it actually, when I'm looking at it, what's, when it's in the window frame, it actually does loop like that, which is pretty neat. Thanks, I hope you learned a lot in this practical hands-on lesson to create an animated GIF for social media. We'll see you in the next lesson.